write a 100-word story about a person who discovers that his life is a movie. Anthony woke up in the clinic, stomach hurt badly. Doctor, what's wrong with me? Either this guy has a light bulb in his ass, or his cologne has a great idea, said one in a white coat. Laughter sounded from somewhere. How are we going to raise our children if you constantly forget to close the toothpaste? answered the woman in the form of the nurse. Again laughter. What the heck? Do something already, Anthony shouted. I can't even pretend I care, the doctor said. Laugh. I don't have a ring, so you can kiss my ass, the nurse replied. Laugh. Anthony screamed in pain. He's with Jesus now. Lord, you will have a hard time, the doctor remarked cheerfully. Again, there was laughter, but Anthony was no longer funny. Damn medical sitcoms. Winston just took out the biggest bunk in town. Yeah, it's not difficult to do it in the cinema, he chuckled. Suddenly, a man in a mask and tie tights appeared in front of him. Stop! I'm on guard for justice! Guy put forward the worst, but nothing happened. Moron, in reality, a person cannot shoot vabs, Vincent remarked cheerfully. Immediately another fell from the sky, without a mask, but with a large red clock. What the heck? I fell, he wondered. In reality, people do not know how to fly and shoot lasers from their eyes. Who are you? I am the superhero from the other side of the screen. Call me Reality Man, Vincent said and walked proudly away. Scientists decided to test a device that allows you to look into the future. The volunteer put on goggles connected to it. Mr. Smith, what do you see? The professor asked. Well, it's bright here. The house is gigantic and I'm small. Looks like there will be giants in the future. God, what else? I live in some sort of burrow and seal food from a giant. This is clearly a post-apocalyptic world. I see a huge piece of cheese. I swallow it. And my body takes the form of the cheese. Now a giant cat is chasing me. Oh lord! Stop! I have dynamite! I paint it like a sausage. The cat eats dynamite, flies up and makes a hole in the ceiling. What crazy future awaits us, the professor exclaimed, and then glanced suspiciously at the device. Stop! What idiot put an Tom and Jerry CD in there? The policemen informed the Rogers that their son had finally been found. They didn't see him for over 10 years, but they didn't lose hope. I must warn you, Shaggy is no longer the nice boy you knew, the cop said grimly. We found him when he was scalping a man, saying that a farmer was hiding under the mask of a monster. And they and the company solved the case. Shaggy has been driving a van around the country for the past few years, attacking innocents. He communicates with an invisible talking dog and a group of guys who died at the graduation party due to his fault. Fred and the others. Also, your son thinks it's like 60s. Maybe it's schizophrenia. But we believe a banned substance known as Scooby Cookies is involved as well. Dale severely exceeded the speed limit on the way to the airport. The cops were already after him. He will explain everything to them later. According to the law of the genre, we will definitely understand him and forgive him. But for now, it's more important not to let Nancy fly away. Dale just realized that she is the love of his life, and if she gets on the plane, he will lose her forever. Dale pushed through the lines at the airport. Nancy was already on her way to land. Nancy, I love you. Do not fly away. And then there was supposed to be a sentimental speech, an ardent kiss and a touch of applause from the crowd. But instead, the guards shot Dale with his tongue on. He huddled on the floor in convulsions and wet himself. Ugh, nerd, watch too many stupid romantic comedies, Nancy snorted and stepped into the plane. (laughs) 
At lunchtime, a respectable old man arrived at the set. Gustav Totenkampf is the most famous performer of the role of corpses. I, my dear, work with Gadar and Bertolucci. What is so difficult? You lie on the set and don't move, the director thought and started filming. Mr. Totenkampf was really persuasive. Not a single muscle flitched on his face. His lips turned blue, his jaw dropped. After the comment, stop, cut, the assistants rushed to help the famous actor. And then it turned out that he was not breathing and even had time to cool down. Burn out at work, the director thought and called the cops. At night, when the mortuary workers began the autopsy, Gustav Tottenkampf jumped on a metal table, shouted, Op! and began to make reverences in front of the unconscious senators. Mr. President, the alarmed advisor burst into the Oval Office. I have breaking news. Evil aliens have attacked the Earth. What? Again? Crap. I the monsters of the end of the world, or here you are, aliens. What are the instructions, sir? What should we do? The president looked at the advisor with a determined look. The same is always, Mr. Alvin. Find a bullet teen who gets bullied at school but looks like a 30-year-old jock. Give him a goofy friend who will sacrifice himself in the end. And the hot classmate. And let these three save humanity. The advisor accepted the instructions and ran out of the door, where he was met by an excited admiral of the army. What did the president say? Yeah, as usual. We rake the shit ourselves. The president again watched too many teenage fantasy films. Anthony got out of the basement and rushed to the other side of the street. He had to hurry. Suddenly, a superman landed in front of him. That huge flowing raincoat. Crap, not this again. Anthony was scared. Mister, do you need help? Give me a hand. No, no, I'll manage it myself. The fireman ran around the corner. No, I'll help him, he grabbed Anthony's hand, leaving Burns. No, he's mine, shouted out of nowhere, the rubber man appeared and wrapped his long arms around Anthony. Please, let me save him, the invisible man howled. I haven't saved anyone for half a year already. All the superheroes of the super city were thrown to the rescue of Anthony. They pulled him in different directions and, accidentally, tore him to pieces. Damn, again! Superman got angry. You need to be more careful with them. There are so few ordinary people left. It will crash into the ship and we all will die, Jack shouted. Lord, save us, Rosie pleaded. As you wish, said the Lord, and the iceberg sailed past the Titanic. The ship arrived in New York safe and sound. Rosie and Jack went ashore. A month later, they got married. A year later, they had a child. Two years later, another one. And then, another one. Rosie stopped taking care of herself. She got fat, her hair was thinning, her teeth were loose. Jack realized that love had passed. He began to drink and disappear in Dumbo's establishments. He had accumulated a lot of deaths, and he no longer knew how to live on. Lord, bring everything back and send us to this iceberg again, he pleaded, lying drunk in the tavern. Etta Big Pops has always dreamed of being a singer, and she sang really well. Something about big and bright feeling, but it turns out that no one was interested. But why give up on your dreams? She made the lyrics dumber. Implants and silicon increased in the body in proportion of the feeds. And the number of clothes on the contrary decreases. Scandals. Outrageous. Soon she became the highest paid singer in the world. Until something terrible happened. The world suddenly turned out into a silent black and white movie. Horrible, she howled to herself, posing half-naked for a magazine. My songs are art! This is my bread! What will I earn now? However, her popularity has not gone away. The world did not even notice that she stopped singing. (music) 
Let us know which story you liked the most in the comments down below. And also send us new themes for 100 word stories. Don't forget to subscribe and click the thumb button. Thank you.